Hi there, my name is Merlin, like the wizard. This is a follow-up video to one I posted a few months ago, where I showed off this thing I made, which is a fully automated strip mining network in Minecraft. It uses these computer craft turtles. And a lot of people seemed interested in figuring out how to make it for themselves, so basically if you want to have this on your world, have these turtles go out and mine for you, um, in a way that's sort of smart enough that you can just leave them be and they'll dump ore into central repository, then this just follow along with this video and I'll t tell you how to set it up. I haven't really made a tutorial before that much, so uh, you know, bear with me, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll try to get to them, and uh, yeah, enjoy. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have the right mods installed. So you're going to need computer craft, and then depending on what version you're using, uh, you're going to want peripherals plus one for 1.12, or peripherals plus plus for 1.7, and I'll put links to those. Uh, there's not a peripherals uh, port for 1.16 yet, so unfortunately I don't think this is going to work on 1.16. Sorry. Um, but anyway, once you have those mods installed, the next thing you're going to want to do is download the code from GitHub and just copy it onto a floppy disk, which you can do by finding the world save, the computer's folder, the disk's folder, the folder for that disk, like folder zero in this case, and just paste all the stuff into there. Uh, so yeah, once you have, also, uh, I believe the code right now is 136 kilobytes, uh, which is past, at least for me, the default maximum floppy disk size. So you're going to want to change that in your config to make it bigger. If you don't have access to your config for computer craft, I would say uh, you could delete the pocket files. Might work uh, to make it small enough. But yeah, basically if you can, just change the config file. So once you have that done, you're going to want to get your necessary items. So let's see, 12 advanced monitors, one advanced computer, one wireless modem, one disk drive, some number, you could really just do it with one, uh, what is it, it's a advanced chunky wireless turtle, and then you're going to want an advanced mining wireless turtle, um, and you make those this way with the chunk loader from the peripherals mod and a wireless modem a pickaxe and a wireless modem in the crafting table like that. Uh, it doesn't really matter which side you put them on, uh, except for aesthetically, so that's up to you. And then you're also going to need five regular computers and five ender modems. So over here, this is going to be the GPS hoster. These four computers are going to provide GPS location services for the whole world. And then this is going to be a message repeater. So basically, in computer craft, you send wireless rednet messages, and what a repeater does is because it has is is um, it can extend the signal. So any signal it gets, it'll send back out. And if you put an ender modem on it, which has infinite range, basically it effectively makes it so that the entire world has infinite range um, on the wireless transmissions. Unfortunately, computer craft 1.7, I don't believe, has ender modems. So you're just going to need like a bunch of signal extenders if you're doing it on 1.7. But anyway, I'll show you how to get the GPS and repeater set up. You want to go into these things and say edit startup. Did I spell that right? Yep. Edit startup and then shell dot run G uh, GPS host and then the coordinates here. If you already know how to do this, feel free to skip this part. But anyway, and the coordinates, 63, 65, 337, and then save, exit, reboot, check to make sure it's uh, doing the right position, which here it does seem to be, and then do that for all the other ones, which I'm just going to do real quick. All right, and now that you've done that, I will show you how to set up the repeater. So it's going to be the same beginning, edit, start startup, and then you're going to want to do shell.run repeat. Uh, it is a built-in program that the thing knows. Reboot, and boom, zero messages repeated. So once you have all that set up, basically you can just leave it on, and it will serve the world for the rest of time, uh, theoretically. All right, so with that done, we can actually get started. You're going to want to make your control room. So you want to find a nice flat open spot. Hey look, a nice flat open spot, how about that? Plop down a block, that's going to be the center. The control room by default extends in eight directions, uh, sorry, in eight blocks in every direction. 
So now you want to find north, which you can do with the debug menu, or I suppose you could use the sun if you're old-fashioned. Uh, dig out, so face north, dig out these two blocks, like so. This is just for reference, because this block is the one that turtles take to go down to the mine. This block is the one they take to come back up. So once you've done that, uh, place down your disk drive. And you're going to want it, doesn't really matter where, just somewhere within eight blocks of that. Then you got to do your computer, wireless modem, and monitor, which you're going to do a uh, th uh, four wide by three tall monitor, like so. Then open the disk drive, plop in your floppy disk, and the first thing you're going to want to do is edit disk slash hub files slash config.lua. So there's only two things you really need to do before starting your mine. Only two things you need to change in the config. The first one is add this block here as the mine entrance. So not the one, not where you're standing, but the actual block below it, which in this case is 39, 63, 336. Boom. Just typing it in for reference there. And then if I go here, 39, 63, 336. Hey, look, it's already basically there. It's almost as if I've tried recording this once before. Um, oops, so, sorry, I didn't mean to close it yet, because there's another thing we want to change, which is this mine level. So the only other thing you really got to do before starting your mine is change which levels it's mining on. So if you want it to be on a single level, like for instance right now I want it to be on level 50, I just have chance of 1.0, but if I wanted it to be on multiple levels, I would write all those levels and then give them all uh, chances. And basically what's going to happen is the turtle, when it goes down, is going to each pair of turtles, will roll a die, and they'll go to a random one based on the weighting you give. Okay, so with that done, save, exit, and now run disk slash hub.lua. Boom, up and running. That's all it takes. This thing is already totally copied over and running on the computer. So what's next is to do the turtles. So plop down your turtle. It's got to be facing the disk drive. Uh, it won't work if it's on the left or right. Then click on it, disk slash turtle. So what it wants is the ID of the hub computer to link to. The idea here, you might want to have multiple hubs, uh, multiple mines, just like one here, one over there, one in the nether. Um, and you just want the turtles to be paired with a single hub so that they don't get sort of crossed or confused. So what you want to do here, Open up the prompt, os.getComputerID, uh, 17, awesome. Enter in 17, now this guy's linked. Cool, so almost done. Now the turtle's trying to go to its home, but it doesn't have any fuel. So all you're going to need to do, pop in one fuel and type refuel. And I promise that the only time you'll ever need to manually refuel these guys is right now when you first initialize, uh, initialize them. So you did the mining turtle, now pop down the uh, chunky turtle, doesn't matter which order you do them in, but you do at least one of each. Disk slash turtle, like so, 17 again, awesome, plop down a coal, refuel, now this guy's ready to go. And you can see they're already, they kind of know their way around. Um, I forgot to say, you probably should not put this setup to the left or right of this hole because the turtles will sort of bump into it. Anyway, so see how this guy's just now hanging out over here, staring off into the distance, contemplating life? He's actually waiting for his chest, or anything that really is an inventory. So, uh, da da da, I'm gonna give myself some chests here, plop them down like so. These can be any, any type of uh, thing that holds items. I use the trap chest just because I don't want them to become one chest, they should be two separate chests. So what he's doing right now is this guy's waiting for fuel. This chest is the fuel chest, so plop in your coal. He's going to automatically take coal out and refuel himself, like so. This chest is for items so uh, that they end up mining so that you can just leave. And at this point, uh, it's all set up. Okay, so I've added some more turtles and labeled their homes. Uh, it's totally possible to start the mine with only two turtles, but I thought the more the merrier. And this area here is where they sort of pair up, wait for each other and pair before going off to the mine. Anyway, uh, I thought now I would sort of explain how to use the system, because it's not that complicated, but it's definitely worth an explanation. So 
Here is the main control screen. This is a map of the area. These two blocks in the center represent those two, and the yellow things are the turtles. Uh, you can see I can tab around here, and I can zoom out, zoom in. Here, this level, level 50, is uh, basically it's going to start showing progress. Once we start the mine, it'll show mine progress. And if you have multiple levels, you can tab between them here, and it'll show progress for whichever level you're looking at. We only have one level right now, so it doesn't do anything. If I click center, that recenters, and you can see the coordinates there. Uh, yeah, menu button. So this is the main menu, mastermind.lua. You can see this toggle power button is the main kill switch, on switch for the whole system. If I click on a turtle, like turtle 18, which is this guy, I believe, yep. You can see this guy's parked, because he's parked, and he's got all this info on him and we've got all these functions so I'm just gonna real quick explain how turtles work with their states when the turtle turns on he starts in state lost and states are actually maintained by the hub not by the turtle not that that's something you need to know but uh, yeah starts lost and based on where he is he's gonna try and find his way figure out basically what he should be doing so if he's in the control room he says okay I'm not assigned to a mine yet so I should find my way back home and then maybe think about getting assigned to a mine or pair up. Uh, if he's below ground, so somewhere down there, he's going to try to find his way back to the nearest uh, shaft, the nearest mine shaft. Um, and if he was already on a mine, he'll try and you know find his way back to what he was doing. So that's why you can sort of restart the computer or restart a turtle or even exit out of the game and come back and turtles will keep uh, mining the same place because they, they remember. Um, so yeah, starts out lost, then finds what he's doing. If he's not assigned yet, he goes to state idle, which just means not currently assigned. And idle then will turn into pair when he's ready to pair. Uh, and then once he's paired, it'll turn into trip. And trip is the state they're in when they're going from up here, the control room, down to the mine. So trip, they get to the mine, then they're in state mine. And uh, and they sort of toggle between state mine and state weight, uh, which is because there's two of them. They go out in pairs, and when one has moved forward and is waiting for the other one to move forward, that one's in state weight. And when the other one's moved forward and is waiting for the other one to mine out a vein or do whatever, uh, it'll be in state weight, the chunky turtle. Um, so yeah, I believe that's those are all the states. Uh, oh, one more, one more state. Uh, which is an important one, it's HALT. There's actually a button here to actually to, to just automatically switch to state HALT. Um, and what that means is basically, so the hub is sending them instructions on all the things they should be doing and is automatically controlling their movement, but sometimes you want to switch it over to manual control. And HALT is what uh, is basically the state they're in whenever you're manually controlling them. So if I click reset, you're going to see he turns to lost, idle, park, that's because the mine is off right now, the whole system, which means if you're idle, you go and park in your home, and then after you're parked, you switch to state park. But if I tell him to go up, I click this up button, now he's in state halt. So you can see he moved up, and now he's in state halt. And as long as I keep controlling him, move him around, or whatever, he's going to stay in state halt. If I reset, now the computer's taking over again, and it's back to being automated. So, uh, yeah, a lot of buttons, if you press any of these buttons, or return, or halt, um, or issue really any other command, then it'll automatically switch the turtle to state halt. Whew, okay, what's next? So, that's halt. It's also reset. I kind of explained that just hands control back to the computer. Uh, clear. So the way that turtles work in their actions is the hub has a list of tasks that the turtle's assigned to do. And every time you click a button or every time it wants the turtle to do something, it's going to add a task to the task list. And then basically it's just going to keep sending to the turtle, do a task, do a task, do a task. And the turtle is going to finally do the task and then report back that it's done the task. And at that point, the turtle will say, okay, I mean, the, the hub will say, okay, you've done that task, move on to the next one. Anyway, 
So the point is, it's kind of like Sims or some other, maybe Warcraft, I don't know, uh, where you can assign tasks to entities and then they'll go do them one by one and they won't move on to the next one until they're done with the current one. So clear is basically, it just clears the current task. So you can see, let's say I made this turtle turn right, right, right? So I'm going to have him turn around and then I'm going to tell him to go forward and then go up. And right now, this turtle is not moving. And the reason is because it can't move forward. This turtle here has the word computer in its ID, which is on this turtle's disallow list for things he can dig through. I'll explain that later. But um, basically, the turtle knows he can't dig through another turtle. So he's trying to go forward, but he can't go forward. So every time he doesn't go forward, he says, I failed that task. And then the computer says, OK, try again. And he can't try again. So he's never going to go up, even though I, you know, I could keep hitting the up button over and over again. He's never going to go up because he's trying to do that other task and failing. But what I can do is I can hit clear, and then I can hit up. And clear will entirely clear the task queue, and then he'll be able to do his motion. Cool. Reset. Send him back. Uh, did I hit it? I think I missed it. Reset. There we go. Um, oh, I guess he's going to do the whole loop. Sometimes they don't know how to get back in the most efficient way. Uh, okay, so we did reset, clear, halt, reboot. It's pretty obvious. It doesn't, like I said, you can reboot turtles, and it really doesn't change much. Even if they're already doing a mine, they'll just keep going because the hub will remember everything, even if you reboot the hub. Uh, update. So all the hub and turtle and pocket computer files are on the floppy disk, and basically you never want to ed edit the files locally. You always want to edit them on the disk itself. So when you edit, let's say you're changing something, it could be the config file or you're changing something about the actual code and you want to update the turtles, you would click this button update. And that will, over RedNet, send all the files as strings. It'll process them and save them to its local memory and then reboot. So that's very useful for me when I'm coding this. And hopefully if, if anyone else is wanting to edit things, that will be very useful too, because you don't have to make them come over and redo everything, uh, which would suck. Return, you don't really need to use it. It basically will just automatically make a turtle come back here. It'll switch to halt and come back here. But I don't recommend using that. Most of the times you want the turtles to come back, you're going to want to just turn off the system. And then the last button is find, which will just locate the guy on the map, center on them, and that's very useful for if you are trying to find a turtle somewhere. Um, yeah. So that's all these functions. If I go now to the main menu, here all these buttons will just do the fu that function for every turtle. So if I hit update, now they all update. I should probably uh, explain why every time I reboot them, they move. The reason is because they when they restart, they don't know where they are, and they want to find where they are based on the GPS. But the issue is they also want to find what their orientation is. So you can see this guy knows he's facing east, but there's no actual built-in way for them to do that. So the only way for them to do it is to move one block to the side and, uh, and then get their new location and figure out their orientation based on that. So every time you reboot them, they're going to move one block and come back. And they, they try their best not to mine anything. And if they have to mine something, they do. But... Um, yeah, it doesn't... It, it, they're pretty good at it. Okay. Uh, all is a button that basically... So this is turtle 21, but then you can see this little arrow. And if I click that, turtle 22, 23, 18, 19, 20. And that's just... It's basically a quick way to tab through all your turtles so that you can see them. Um, similarly, if I click mining... That just gets a list of all the mining turtles. Uh, I can't remember exactly why I added this. I thought it might be useful. This way you only get uh, one turtle per pair as well. Yes. So, okay. Uh, last thing. Not last thing. There's more things. But uh, the config file. So I showed off the mine, mine entrance and mine levels aspect of the config file. But what you also might want to change... I'm just going to show the most important ones. R to do, do hub files config. Okay, so that's mine entrance levels. Okay, dig disallow. So this one's pretty important. 
Basically, every time a turtle digs a block, it's going to check the ID string of that block, and if one of these strings is in that string, it's not going to dig the block. So, like this uh, example I made, um, if, you, if you enter chest, then it'll prevent it from landing in Minecraft trap chest, because that string is contained. And so I added computer here so it wouldn't dig through any of its turtle brothers and um, chest and chair, just because I, I used to have a chair I didn't want it to dig through. Anyway, so just add things here if you, you know, really con are, like consider your wool, bro wool blocks precious and you don't want it to mine through them, then add wool here and you won't have to worry about it. Uh, other things... Uh, da, 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 da. This is pretty good, uh, pretty well commented, so I won't talk about all of it. But, uh, or names. This is where you enter all the things that it considers or. Um, so I just did it for all the mods I was using at the current moment, plus vanilla Minecraft, but you might want to add things here. Uh, fuel names as well. Right now I just have it set to use coal, but you can add things here too and it should work. Um, yeah, I think those are all the important ones. So let's say you change something in the config file. Because you're changing it on the disk, you're not actually updating the hub, which means what you're going to want to run is open the shell and run update. So what that's going to do is just update this, reboot, and should be good. And actually, if you change the config file, it should automatically change the config file on all the turtles, because the turtles actually get their config from the hub. So don't you don't have to worry about that. Um, right, another thing, pocket computer. So I showed off in the other video that you could use the pocket computer as sort of an extra access point to this. So I want to show how to do that. So what you're going to need to do, place another disk drive, plop your pocket, pocket computer in, go here. And let's see how to do this. So now, if I ls, you can see there's disk and disk 2. So disk here is the floppy disk, and disk 2 is what it's calling the pocket computer. And that's an important distinction. If you added them in the opposite order, then it would be the opposite way around. So you just you should figure out, you know, ls disk and just make sure you're dealing with the right one. Right now, if I ls disk 2, there's nothing in it. So what you want to do is disk slash pocket.lua, there it is, and then you uh, you want to add in arguments here for the source and the destination. So in this case the source is going to be disk, the destination is going to be disk2, and run that, and all that's going to do is copy over these two, hub, hub ID and update. And so now what you can do is run update, and this thing will wirelessly connect and get all of its data, and now you have a uh, nice little uh, access terminal. So this thing, I didn't program as much on it as I could have. Uh, feel free to add your own stuff. I didn't spend much time on it because I didn't really want to. So user commands, what are those? Basically it's the same thing as uh, all the other commands, but you can type them. So if I want to update turtle 18, I can type in update 18, and that will do that, and basically all the other stuff. Alt 18. Um, I can also say turtle 18 up. Oops, sorry. User. Turtle 18 up. And that will do its thing. Turtle 18 forward. You do have to type out the whole thing every time. There's no uh, tab completion or anything like that, unfortunately. But yeah, it's pretty cool. You can control turtles wirelessly from your pocket. Um, reset 18. Yes, there you go. Okay, so just a couple other things that might be completely useless, but uh, I just want to mention. Uh, the mine is saved on the hub in the file called mine there. And every time you update, you might think because it's copying all the data from the disk to here, it's going to uh, erase the mine. But that is not the case because what it actually do, does is the opposite. It copies the mine from here onto the disk so that you have a backup of it. Um, so don't worry about that. The other thing is if, is it's true every time you update, it deletes all these files, but if you want to actually have files on these computers other than those that don't get deleted, you can make a folder, mcmcter persistent. Is that how you spell it? Yeah. Uh, and then if I say edit persistent slash test, blah, Exit, update, you can see uh, it's still there. Um, 
and yeah, and that's true on this and on Turtles and on Pocket Computers. So let's tr turn this thing on, shall we? Do, do, do. But yeah, you can see a little M now that I've turned on the Pocket Computer. That's a little indicator of where I am. Toggle power, that turns green, and there they go, doing their thing. So they go around in circles a few times. They sort of, they calculate how much fuel they're going to need in stages. So that's why sometimes they go around more than once. There's probably a more efficient way for me to have done that, but that's how it is right now. It's kind of nice to watch them dance around for a while. Uh, and so you can see one will show up and wait for a moment, and then the next one will show up. So this guy is just going to hang out here till he has a mate. It's very romantic. Here's this guy coming back. Boom, they made up. And now they're going down to the mine. And they always make sure to send the mining turtle first so that if there's any blocks in the way, that guy can mine them out. And same way on the way back, usually. That, that part is kind of iffy, but should work. So now let's go back to the mine or the screen, I mean, and here you can see him going out. So here's the indi indication that this has been mined, is this light gray, and you can see they're in their pairs. This guy's off to the side, which means he's found some ore. And he's mining out that ore. Let's jump down. I'm a cheater. Do, 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 do. Yeah, in fact, I'm really a cheater. Let's see this guy mining out. So you can see this guy's going to town, mining out stuff. Here's these other guys going. And... Yeah, not much to say. It's nice to watch them. Kind of majestic. Power off. There is one more thing I want to point out that is kind of unfortunate. Uh, so the point of the Chunky Turtles, as I said is, in the previous video, is to keep chunks loaded that the pair of turtles are in, so that even if you fly all the way over here, they, you know, they don't turn off. Because once you get a certain distance away, normally in computer craft, the turtles will turn off. And that's the whole reason for needing peripherals plus one. The issue is, if you log out of the game and they're too far away, even with chunky turtles, they will still, uh, when you reload the game, they won't turn on until the player enters that chunk. So what you're going to want to do is every time before you turn off the world, uh, just recall them, send them back home, and yeah. It's kind of, it's unfortunate, it's just in the way the, the mod is written, I'm kind of bummed about it, but it's true, but I outfitted the pocket computer to make it kind of easier to do that, so you can have this with you wherever you are in the world, you might be over here, and basically, so your power is off, you can, here if you want to turn the system on, you can say on, if you want to turn it off, and say off, so on is on, off now, you can see it's off, and it says turtles parked zero, right? So as the turtles start to park themselves, this number's going to go up, and eventually it'll turn green. So zero, one, two, three, turtles are parking themselves, you can see over there they're parking themselves, and as the last one goes, boom, now it's green. And that would indicate that it's now safe to exit the world because they're all back home, and yeah, and then when you reload the world, you can just type in uh, on, and that'll restart the system going. Okay, so that is how to install and use mastermind.lua. Uh, thanks for watching. This is, again, I don't have experience making tutorials, so if you do have any questions, send up a signal. I'll throw you the line. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know how much more work I'm going to do on this project. It, it took a while, but uh, if, if a lot of people are really interested in more features, maybe I'll come back to it. And uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. I love watching a mine. I love... It really, like, on, on my other world, I really don't have to do much maintenance to it. Uh, it just kind of mines for me. And so it does everything I needed it to, except it took a while to... I feel like I ran out of coal. I might have to start them off with a few stacks. Um... Anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go to bed now.